Tom Bauer is uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And the BBC has been thrown into another major impartiality row after one of its star journalists launched an impromptu attack on Donald Trump. John Simpson, who has served as the Beeb's world affairs editor since 1988, posted a since-deleted tweet yesterday which read... The poll, which showed Trump 10 points ahead of Biden in the US, may well be inaccurate. That doesn't mean we in the West shouldn't be working really hard to strengthen ourselves against the possibility that Trump might win. I don't see any sign of this at present. Simpson has since posted what the BBC press office tonight called a clarification, explaining he deleted the original tweet because it was badly expressed before once again warning the world of the consequences of a second Trump presidency. So, Tom, you worked at the BBC for 25 years. John Simpson is meant to be regarded as a BBC great. So what's happened to this organisation? What's going on? Well, nothing has changed. I mean, it's always been filled with people with opinions. What has happened really is, though, that the so-called Director General, Tim Davey, has absolutely no control, editorial control, over what his staff are saying. So he failed immediately with Gary Lineker, as you recall. And with Gary Lineker, he was absolutely prepared to let the man in the end dictate how he was going to tweet and what he was going to tweet. But really what is really worrying is that they don't want to accept vis-a-vis -vis Trump that it isn't some sort of small cabal that would vote for him. And I'm very anti-Trump. I think it would be terrible if he'd be the next president, especially if he'd be in prison. But what's apparent is it's the electorate. And this is what the BBC doesn't want to accept, that somehow the polls show that Trump is ahead because the people of America, for one reason or another, at the moment favour Trump over Biden. And really what's happening to the BBC is it's a sort of implosion of editorial control. No report yet on Hugh Edwards. Or the Bashir uh, thing, the Tim Davies seeking to cover up the cover up the cover up. Uh, all the time, there's no direction. And the other day when Nick Robinson interviewed Sunak on the Today program, he was so aggressive. And actually at one stage said to the Prime Minister, you're, you're taking too long really in answering the questions. I've got so many questions to go through. In other words, my questions are more important than your answers. And the bias is all the time coming through because the director general, the editor-in-chief, Tim Davey, doesn't assert his control. So this T. Simpson thing is just another example of what is happening. The BBC is actually running out of control. It needs to actually be brought to the back to understand it's meant to be impartial and deliver facts, not opinions, in that way. Yeah, no, indeed, indeed. It, 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 the, the problem is, though, all of these people who leave the BBC... Right, so we've seen Emily Maitlis, John Sopel, Lewis Goodall, all of them are becoming hardened left-wing activist journalists, I guess you would say. So it's becoming increasingly difficult, I think, for the BBC to cover up what's going on, especially given their tweets are not at all controlled. Well, exactly. And Tim Davies lost control Absolutely. because of the strike by Gary Lineker. Exactly, and that's the problem. When Emily Maitlis was in the BBC in... Definitely good. Or we all knew she was a left wing. She supported Labour, and she was entirely entitled to. The problem was that she put her views into the airwaves, and it was always unbalanced. That is the problem. There's okay. Of course, these people have. Every journalist has got an opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. Is that you've got to balance it and show that you understand there's an alternative view. And the way the BBC run is run at the moment, you really think all the time that it is anti-government. You believe it is pro-cancel culture. You think that it is very woke, and there's no balance. There's no striving for impartiality, and this. Uh, the moment that you really had it come out really appallingly was obviously the Lineker case, but also with Hugh Edwards, the way they, uh, Newsnight launched an investigation into their bro uh, broadcast was just an astonishing thing to do. And you know the same with the Bashir, the cover-up is just, it's got to end. And so in the end, we've got to decide, really, that um, the Director General must get control back over the BBC. Yes, indeed. Now, Tom, yesterday we played uh, this hilarious mic flop moment. There it is. When Megan was denied the microphone uh, at this star-studded charity event hosted by Kevin Costner. Uh, and this has gone viral all over the internet. But you have some more exclusive information about the event. Well, I think what's hilarious is that Megan really did think 
I'm told, that when she paid $12,000 for the right to go to this um, event and stand next to Kevin Costner, that would give her speaking rights too. After all, she'd just come from Germany, where she had been lauded at the Invictus Games. But that wasn't Hollywood. She wanted to do the same in Hollywood. And she was convinced she was going to get the right to make the same sort of speech, you know, the great speech about being a great lovey and deeply affected by all the poverty and all the rest of it. But they were having none of it. So she was snubbed by Hollywood. And that really is pretty sad to think you can buy a microphone for $12,000 when really if she paid 100000 she would have had the right to speak. But she was too cheapskate to pay the full rate. <laughs> Indeed. And, and, and look, Tom, really, um, really disturbing uh, moment with the SNP uh, this week because Princess Anne was left waiting for 40 minutes at an official event at Aberdeen, ha Aberdeen Harbour after Holmes Eustace's deputy Shona Robinson arrived late. It's a move that has, has been described as disgraceful. The Scottish government have blamed urgent business. But is this further proof that there does seem to be a real row brewing in Scotland between the SNP and the monarchy? Well, I think the SNP is clearly Republican. They stated it, and Yusuf himself has said that he wants the monarchy abolished. But his real problem is that the Scots don't want the monarchy abolished. The Scots majority is in favour of the monarchy. But what's awful is that Princess Anne is such a hard-working, decent woman. She is really such a trooper for the royal family and for Britain as well. That to have left her waiting all that time was so rude, so unnecessary. And the idea that the deputy leader was so busy that she couldn't make it in time because affairs of state, all affairs of state are there in Scotland that, that mean that you don't arrive on time. And what I think it does is it drives another nail into the coffin of the SNP. It shows that they really are a, a, a declining force, a, a government which is now so under, under investigation through Nicola Sturgeon and the whole police investigation. They really are tainted. And I'm sure the great Scottish people will see that as another reason not to vote for the SNP, because in the end, the royal family embraces their values much more than the SNP does. Very good point. Very well put. Tom Bauer, Thanks thank you so much. We will speak next week.